What's going on Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams coming back to you from the Reef Builder studio in a big contrast to the last video we did showing you the 400 gallon tank and the water flow on it. This is the long awaited update on the Red Sea Max Nano Reef Aquarium. If you look at this aquarium today, it's May 19th, it looks almost exactly like the way we set it up on November 17th. And for some of you doing the math, that means that this tank is just at six months old. And I don't know exactly how it all came together, but we set this tank up in one single day. So we put together the tank stand and equipment. We uh, aquascaped the rock, added the sand, um, made some seawater, then added uh, all the corals that you see here, and then the pair of fish that you see here. And I am proud and really surprised to say that in six months, I have not put my hands in this tank even a single time. You might be asking, how is that possible? Um, but for the most part, the only thing that this tank has required is the light feeding of the fish and uh, some scraping of the glass with um, an algae magnet and um, manual addition of fresh water to make up for evaporation. So this tank is, you know, when I started this tank, it was mostly an effort to show people how easy it could be to set up a tank in one day. And as the weeks and months progressed, every time I cleaned the glass thinking to myself, okay, well, the water change is coming, um, I would look at this tank, the water's crystal clear, the corals look beautiful, the fish look awesome, and it literally just doesn't need any intervention. And I've, I've thought about all the things that this tank has going for it, and I wanted to put together a top 10 tips on how to keep an easy, successful nano reef tank. So although I'm discussing in terms of nano reef, almost all of this really applies to uh, a regular large reef tank. So without further ado, uh, let's get started on my top 10 list because YouTube loves top 10s and I think we all do too. Um, so the first thing I wanna tell people about this tank is don't do what I did. Take your time, but you don't have to take forever to get your reef tank set up. So we set this tank up in a single day, but it was took all day. Um, I, I think in this day and age, we know enough about reef aquariums that one week is actually kind of a reasonable timeline or even one month to build up to this. But if you know what you're doing and you have some experience or the ear can bend the ear of someone who does, um, there's no reason you have to wait forever and ever and ever for your tank to do this mythical process called cycling, which people will tell you are all different things. Um, number two, and I think this is one of the things that really works in the favor of this aquarium is feed very little. This tank has gone on about 180 days and I would say I've fed the fish about 50 times. I'm not kidding, even when I think about it, uh, these fish get fed about every three days. Just because, I mean, to be honest, they're the only thing in this whole tank that actually looks different because they're bigger. Um, so feed very little. You, you, you'll be really hard pressed to have problems in your tank if you feed very little and it's a lot easier to feed very heavily. Um, so keep the light dimmer and bluer. If the food is for the fish mostly, the light is for the entire ecosystem and the corals. Again, you're gonna be really hard pressed to underlight your corals. Um, and the other thing is make it bluer. Uh, bluer light seems to stimulate a lot less algae growth. Um, it's a lot easier on the corals. Again, we're not trying to grow corals like crazy. We just want some beautiful, nice looking, you know, specimens in here. Um, so that's tip number three. Tip number four is obviously, I didn't pack this entire tank. So keep a modest biological load. This is a 20 gallon tank. We got about 12 small to medium sized corals in here and then two clownfish. Um, that's very reasonable for this size tank. And this is one of the problems that people get into when they have a nano tank, they don't have the space. So they want to pack it in, pack it in, pack it in. Just one more fry, just one more fish. Um, so the modest biological load kind of reflects the very light feeding that is, I believe, you know, really helping this tank to be more successful. Um, 
along those same lines, use a reasonable amount of rock and sand. It's in vendors' interests to sell you a pound per gallon of rock or sand, but that doesn't really translate to how reef tanks really function and really operate. Um, I'm not a big sand guy, but I think in this instance, the sand has actually helped with keeping some of the chemistry balanced. And there's like three or four pieces of rocks in here total. So yeah, you want a little bit of rock and sand, but don't overdo it because that's the one thing you can get. It's really easy to try to set up your reef and make it look good with rock because you think it's gonna be weeks or months before you can get corals. And so that's another idea here with this series on the Red Sea Max Nano Tank update. Did I mention this tank's six months old and I haven't done a water change or touched it in that whole time? Um, here's another one that people don't talk about nearly enough. I think it's well known in the freshwater world, but what also makes this tank work is um, easy fish and easy corals. There's no tricky corals in here. There's no flower pots, acros, um, long tentacle plate corals. I mean, there's still a lot of other hardy corals in here, and I'm sure some of you will fight me about or debate about what's an easy to keep corals, but euphelias, brain corals, candy coral, uh, green star polyp, a few leathers, and a duncan. Um, and a couple clownfish, right? These are not antheus that need to be fed four or five times a day, right? That's really just gonna add the challenge to keeping an easy, easy reef tank. Um, so yeah, that's a discussion we can have a lot more of, should be addressing a lot more of, is easy to keep fish and corals. This next one really applies to all tanks, and we didn't do it 100% in this tank. Prevent pests from getting into the tank. If, 10 to 20% of my time here at the studio is spent cleaning glass and protein skimmers and managing water chemistry. The entire rest of the time, energy, and resources is spent dealing with pests and parasites. I'm talking about Aptasia, Bologna, every kind of hair algae, flatworms. I mean, you name it, ick on your fish. Having quarantine fish and to a lesser degree quarantine corals really really it's just gonna prevent you from having weird issues with your tank and you'll be able to just enjoy it and observe it. Um, there was a Valonia outbreak and we treated Razor uh, to the instructions and it went from a field of bubbles, which I regret not documenting because it was ugly, to a field of dead bubbles and then they all went away. The, the rock looks like I set it up just the other day and there's like three or four small Aptasia popping uh, in here, but since I'm not feeding a lot, goes back to rule number two, um, they're not growing like crazy. So after this video, I'm gonna do actual water change and maintenance, and I'm gonna document that as well. So prevent pests. Um, eight, manage evaporation. I think there's been too much of a direction in the reef aquarium hobby to just let tanks evaporate and add an auto top off. And you know how I feel about auto top offs, right? You have to have a water flow sensor or water level sensor. You have to have a controller, a power supply, a feed pump. So that all the kinds of things to make the auto top off or give it a reason or a chance to break. Um, so this tank doesn't have an auto top off. We put a lid on there, right? So the lid just reduces the evaporation almost completely. I think I've topped off this tank in six months. I'm just gonna ballpark it about 10 times. Um, that's actually helped with uh, the mineral balance here in this reef aquarium. Um, number nine, this one's a little bit more philosophical. It's observe carefully, but don't overreact. So this tank is not perfect, right? It's had one Aptasia since, you know, about a week into it. And it has some Valonia in there, like I said, that we treated. And the Duncan at the top is not the healthiest specimen you've ever seen. But one of the worst things that you can do in any reef tank is see one upset coral and just really overreact, trying to solve every single problem when you have a big, you know, basically a thriving ecosystem. So, you know, it's important to watch your tank. It's important to know what What's going on, don't let things get out of control, and uh, just don't overreact. Be mindful, watch a lot. And uh, number 10, <laughs> I'm, I'm using this one twice because it matters so much. 
feed very little. I don't think you can really understand how little little means. And for these guys, we're talking about four or five tiny, tiny flakes of food every several days. Um, these guys are really healthy weight, really great looking fish. And the, one of the reasons that this tank has worked is because I use um, very clean tap water here in the Rocky Mountains, the uh, foothills of Golden in Colorado. We actually tested the chemistry for only the second time in six months, and it was actually quite surprising. Um, so the alkalinity was 7.6 never dosed. Calcium was 315, which you might expect, never dosed. Magnesium was 1410, which you might also not expect. Again, we've never dosed. And the nitrates were zero. You could kind of tell that from how little growth there is here in this aquarium. And that just kind of goes back to um, using you know, the makeup water that does have a little bit of minerals inside of it. So um, those are my I thought about it for a while. Those are my 10 tips for an easy, successful reef tank. Um, you may have noticed I didn't talk about how to change water, how to make up minerals and chase chemistry and stuff. For most reef tank, if you're trying to do something really basic, you're not gonna have to do all that. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. You know, But my short answer is for pretty much all of that stuff, is just do a reasonable water change, which is what this tank finally deserves. So um, I hope, that some of these tips uh, resonate with you guys and that if you're new to reef keeping or getting started, um, these 10 tips will really help you have an easier and more successful reef tank. So um, thank you very much for joining me here on another video from the Reef Builder Studio. This has been a really fun, interesting tank. Like I said, I didn't set out to prove anything. It's just every time I went to go do a walk, thought I was gonna do a water change. Um, the tank just looks so good, I didn't really wanna mess with it. So um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put those down below. If you wanna learn more about reef keeping, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Later, guys.